Thanks for joining us for Einstein On. Our subject has been drug discovery, and our guest is Dr. Vern Schramm, Chair of Biochemistry at Einstein. Vern, you've been asked to establish a new center for drug discovery at Einstein. Tell us a little bit about it. If you think about the way Einstein has operated and is operating now, Einstein is one of the world's best discovery engines. You know, what do I mean by that? I mean that we're unsurpassed at our ability to understand how cells work, to find the kind of targets that I'm showing here that are involved in different kinds of diseases. We've talked a lot about cancer, but the research at Einstein is much broader than that. We have research in developmental disease, in cell receptors, blood pressure, blood clotting, um, the spread of cancer. There's dozens of different kinds of applications that our fundamental research touches on here. What we're missing, though, is the ability to take those discoveries the next two step into drug design, synthesis of the drug, and then testing that drug to make sure it's going to be safe in animals and eventually then in humans. So we have no facility here to do that. At the beginning of 2011, Francis Collins, the head of the NIH, uh, released a statement saying that in the past, pharmaceutical industry has really been the leader in drug design and relied on really academic discoveries as a secondary line. That's changing very quickly with the blockbuster drugs going off patent now. Pharmaceutical companies are laying off researchers to save money, and they're turning more and more to small biotechnology companies and also to medical schools and academic institutions for leads for new drugs. Francis Collins said that now academic researchers need to be able to take those two steps. They need to have the tools to be able to enter the drug discovery pipeline and provide leads to the pharmaceutical industry to keep our health care strong in this country. So you're going to be staying, as I understand it, what you used to do is do the initial research and then hand it off. Exactly. And now you're staying in the game a lot longer. Exactly. And the financial implications for that, if they play out, could be tremendous. Uh, they could be tremendous, but our goal for, at Einstein is really human health. What we want to do is try to select the kinds of targets that haven't been well drugged by major pharmaceutical industries for a couple of reasons. One is that it may affect a relatively small population of patients, but in a very adverse way. And secondly, it may be for diseases that are not prevalent in economically well-off countries. In the developing world, there are many diseases like tuberculosis and malaria where we might be able to do something through drug discovery coming from academic centers. So is that going to be the approach? You're going to be looking at th those areas. Um, uh, it's, it's almost a sense of altruism. And I talked to another Einstein faculty member. He's the same thing. They're interested in research. They're interested in, in human health. But there is a sense of altruism behind it. Is that accurate? That is accurate. In fact, that's our mission from the NIH. Most of our research at Einstein is funded by the NIH. And our mission here is fundamental science and the application of fundamental science to problems in human health. If we can do that, we're pushing back the frontiers of science, getting new knowledge for humankind, and we're also serving mankind by taking those discoveries forward into agents that we can translate into human health. Well, I don't want to get back and being too technical now with that very <laughs> lofty description, but you do need certain technologies, certain what they call enabling technologies to make it happen. So what technologies do we have and what technologies do we need? I mentioned to start that we have an enormous discovery engine here, and that's to discover new targets, the kind of target that I talked about with PNP. What we've been able to do in this program is to take things forward by collaborating with groups outside of Einstein that provide chemistry. And we've been lucky in finding drug partners who will do the hard work of drug metabolism, animal testing, and then filing the paperwork and getting us into human clinical trials. Not everyone is so lucky to do that. And today, pharmaceutical companies are more adverse to take on early technologies. They want some proof of concept before they're willing to invest the millions of dollars required to take each step of the drug 
discovery uh, adventure. So we need technologies like chemical synthesis. We need to be able to test whether or not the molecules are targeting the disease in animals and whether or not they're toxic. We need to see how chemically stable our molecules are, whether or not they're metabolized, uh, how the uh, animals are changed by taking these drugs, and then uh, going forward to demonstrate to pharmaceutical companies that this would be a worthwhile investment. Now this process is just getting started. Yes. Give me a sense of the timeline in terms of our own progression at Einstein as we start this process, very exciting process, and we move it along. Um, give me some ideas of some milestones that we have in the years ahead. This process is a little bit like steering a super tanker. Uh, it's moving in one direction, and it takes time and effort even to change course. But we need to change course because it's a mandate for the NIH. The NIH is now emphasizing translational medicine in all of its research pro projects. If that component is present, it gives you an advantage in getting uh, federal funding for research. It also, of course, meets our mission to further health care. So we're at the very early stages of this, uh, and I'll give you an example from our own experience. We licensed these compounds for clinical trials in the year 2000. Uh, one of the compounds has now completed its FDA-required clinical trials and is waiting for FDA evaluation. So between 2000 and 2012 is 12 years. So it's taken 12 years to go through that process. I think it's going to take us maybe a little bit less because we're more nimble in academics than we are in pharmaceutical companies, uh, perhaps 10 years to go from where we are now to a fully functioning, well-oiled engine where we can take our basic science discoveries and convert them uh, with effort, time, and facilities into the stage where pharmaceutical companies, we hope, will be lining at the door to get new technologies out of Einstein. Well, you couldn't do this if you didn't have the outstanding basic research. I mean, that is the foundation for all of this. So Einstein has the basic research. Now it has to develop some of the technology and acquire some of the technology and have groups within Einstein using the technology and working together to make this vision play out. That's exactly right, and it's, it's a well-used phrase, but the phrase is translational medicine. Uh, our discoveries in fundamental and clinical science are outstanding. Uh, we haven't been able to translate, except in a very few cases, those discoveries all the way into the human population uh, and into drugs that will serve mankind. So we hope to be able to do that in the future by expanding our capabilities, by having the enabling technologies here, and by making them available to investigators from everything uh, from cardiology to uh, xenografts. Is there anything that we've left out in terms of the center or in terms of the research that we haven't touched on? We did talk earlier about one other application of these kinds of drugs, and that's in third world diseases or diseases in developing countries. One of those is malaria. As you know, malaria kills around a million children per year throughout the tropics in the world. It's a poorly met medical need because Distribution of drugs is a problem, and secondly, uh, cost is a problem, and thirdly, the profit motive is missing for the development of new drugs from the pharmaceutical industry. So we've addressed that problem with another one of our drugs. We simply took one of our existing drugs uh, that we're already using for the gout indication in humans, and I'll do a little chemistry for you here. I'm going to remove this hydrogen replace it with an amino group. By looking at the fundamental nature of the malaria parasite, we realize that that simple chemistry would make a drug that might be effective against the malarial parasite. And in experiments with infected primates, Aotus monkeys, we can show that this drug given orally will clear the parasites from infected monkeys. So we, we hope that this will be coming down the road and really 
uh, change the face of this disease across the world? Well, I know as a, we'll end on this note, I know as a, as a basic scientist, you have to be very cautious. But what I'm getting is a hint of optimism <laughs> uh, in terms of the promise of this research as it applies uh, to disease and treatments and possibly cures. Is that a fair statement? You can certainly say that we're optimistic. And in fact, you could even criticize us for being optimistic because being a scientist, you have to be optimistic. There are always four reasons to think of why an experiment might fail. But you must do the experiment anyway and be prepared for all four of those failures to happen before you do the correct experiment. So we always have a sense of optimism. Often, often it's not well deserved, uh, but we need that to keep moving ahead and to make progress. Vern, thanks a lot for joining us on that optimistic note. We'll close this conversation, but look forward to many more. It's been a great pleasure. I really like talking about science, and thank you for taking your time, Gordon. We've been talking to Dr. Vern Schramm, Chair of Biochemistry at Einstein. I'm Gordon Earle. This is Einstein On. Thanks for joining us.